All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to our um, OVS Training Technical Assistance Request Program introductory webinar. Um, I'm Blake Cush. I'm the Director of Training Outreach here with the Office of Victim Services, and I'm excited to, to announce and, and share with you guys the relaunch of our very successful um, pilot program from 2018. Uh, I have with us a couple additional uh, program support staff and, and our uh, training partners with us on the lines. Uh, we're having a tough time trying to get Alan's audio to work, but I, I'm going to test it real quick one more time. If that doesn't work, we'll, we'll find a workaround so you can hear from him as well. But um, with us on the line is Jennifer Amsuits from JA Strategies. Uh, Jenny, you want to say hello real quick? Hi, this is Jenny. I'm happy to be part of the program again and look forward to working with everybody. Great. And Alan Krieger from Krieger Solutions is also on the line, I hope. Fingers crossed. Uh, it's show, I, I'm showing a missing audio from his his line, it's, which is okay. So we will, while we're starting the webinar, we'll try to keep uh, him going real quick. Actually, I have him right here. Alan, you there? Yep. All right, Alan, I got I have you on speaker, so the audio might be poor quality. But if you want to just t chime in and say hello to everyone real quick, go ahead. Hey, hello everybody. Sorry about the poor audio. Hope you can hear me. All right, great. So um, Alan uh, and Jenny are our training consultants um, who we have worked with now for multiple years so through various partnerships and training options, um, and they're a tremendous uh, team. And I, I'm excited to kind of introduce them a little more as we get further into this um, and talk specifically about how the program works. So uh, a couple of housekeeping notes for you. We're recording the webinar. We will, once the webinar is over, uh, it takes us a day or two sometimes to get it uh, officially exported and then uploaded. We will publish it on our YouTube training channel. Uh, stay tuned. If you've registered for this webinar, you will get an email when that goes live. Uh, if not, we'll also send this out via training announcements on our listserv and other various avenues as well to get published online. Um, in addition to that, your email is also being used uh, to send out more information while the program hasn't technically launched and doesn't officially open until October 1st. You may begin to get some correspondences directly from Ginny and Allen as a result of participation in today's webinar, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, finally, there's a, a chat feature you'll notice at the bottom of your screen. If you want, you can click the chat button. It's like a little call out uh, text message button at the bottom. And in there, you'll have the option to ask questions throughout the webinar. So I encourage you, if you have any questions, don't wait on them. Don't sit on them till the end of them. Go ahead and type them in. We, all, we also have our program outreach specialist, Rachel Gentili, on the line with us right now. I'm going to say hi real quick, Rachel. There, now you're unmuted. <laughs> Hello. There she is. There I am. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so Rachel will also help field some questions, so um, stay tuned. She can kind of help them as they come in through the through the um, chat feature as well. Uh, and then uh, Rachel is also our program outreach specialist here who will help us when the program starts. And if you're lucky enough or, and you, you actually take advantage of the program, which we hope you will, uh, you may do have correspondences with all four of us who have introduced you to today as well. So it's been a um, – this is it. This is the team that runs the program. Program and uh, I hope you get to know us as the day goes on, but also um, as a, in the future of the next tw two years or so, two and a half years that, that we hope this program continues, um, you'll build some relationship with us, and we hope that this is uh, beneficial for everyone. So take advantage of the chat feature. Email us any questions you have uh, through that, uh, or excuse me, um, th through the chat function. Uh, and then again, after the webinar is over, we'll publish this and send it to you guys. So uh, real quickly, I'm going to show you what we're going to cover today. Um, Let's see here. All right, so a couple quick uh, slides about our the program background, sort of how we ended up with where this program is today, what the pilot program was like. Uh, we'll spend a few minutes talking and highlighting a little bit about that. Um, Jenny and Alan might share a few words on that. And then we're going to jump into sort of who's eligible for this program, how does it work, what's the process. This might be where you'll get a lot of your questions. Uh, but it's in a nutshell the logistics of 
the program are being recycled from how we did it in 2018. So if you're familiar with it from 2018, not much has changed, except for we've added a lot more to the catalog. There's things have been modified from our uh, Jenny and Alan's perspective, and I think you all will really appreciate. Um, but we'll cover a little bit of those uh, nuts and bolts for you about the program today as well. After that, uh, we'll give uh, Jenny and Alan a chance to say hello again as well and, and sort of uh, reintroduce themselves and talk more. Um, and then you'll, of course, always have an opportunity to answer or, or at the very end for us to kind of hash out if any other questions um, weren't answered during your um, during the uh, chat feature or throughout earlier in the um, presentation today, we'll take the opportunity at the very end to, to go through some of that as well. Um, okay, so how did we get here? In a in a in a very over like high mile high view overview of the program. What this essentially is, is a federally funded discretionary training grant program that we've received from the Office of Victims of Crime, and that those training grant funds were issued through a competitive procurement that Jenny and Allen's proposal was phenomenal and won, and that pro program now has resulted in a long-term commitment and project that we'd like to continue, all built off of the success of a pilot program we ran in 2018. In 2018, under another training grants funds, we were able to um, issue a uh, similar um, or, or roll out a similar program that is rooted in the design of something similar to the way the Office of Victims Crimes runs their training technical assistance program or training technical assistance uh, center, excuse me. This also kudos 100% is due to our Deputy Director of Administration, Virginia Miller, because this was a, a brainchild of hers and the idea being we have ideas of what would be great to train our providers on, on the programs that we fund here at OVS. We think it would be great to offer Victim Service Academy trainings and to do our conference every other year, but also our programs are so diverse, they know their training needs better than we will ever know. And the idea being, you know, a year or two years ago, um, coming from Jenny was like, what, what can we do to offer additional training and support to them that's beyond the, the guise of what we would typically offer? And that's uh, sort of how it began. And we, we soft launched it into the, in April 2018. And it ended up being very successful. Um, Jenny will share a little bit in a minute, a little more about um, uh, you know her, her role in it and what the, some statistics about the the 2018 um, program. But it also many of the content and the catalogs training uh, topics were derived from a needs assessment that we conducted. So what we did was a statewide training needs assessment to see what you guys or what VAPs thought was relevant to them and what would be a helpful training topic or training modality, meaning how what are the best ways to offer trainings to you? Is it in-person? Is it via web? Is it a hybrid, et cetera, et cetera? So a lot of the program design was rooted out of that as well. Um, this program in 2018 essentially is a, as it's listed there, a no-cost technical assistance pairing service for you guys. So what does that mean? That that and the, That is us saying there is no expense to you guys. We're leveraging federal training funds for um, uh, for the next few years to be able to support this program so that VAPs can submit through, and we'll go over this process a little bit, through our, our, our dashboard and our portal, they can submit a request for training based on the catalog of services or offerings that are there. Um, it, you may, you'll, and you'll learn this from Jenny in a little bit, you may ask for one thing but need another and that sort of thing that it can be massaged and modified as you get into it. But then eventually Jenny and Alan, our training provider and consultants, uh, partners will be able to then execute that training uh, within those parameters of that original request. So all at zero expense or cost to you guys. So this is ex this is us using leveraging these funds to be able to support you through customized training requests. So in 2018, we featured nearly 30 different, um, or, or the, excuse me, the the pilot program featured nearly 30 different organizational leadership and communication topics, and they were all tailored to each VAP's specific needs. Uh, I can happily say there's more now than there were in 2018. The catalog has grown, um, and so have the modalities for those trainings as well. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jenny and Alan now to share a little bit of the 2018 program highlights. Jenny, you want to jump in? Sure. So as Blake mentioned, you can hear me, right? Uh, yeah. As 
Blake mentioned, we, we did pilot this program last year, um, and Alan and I did training consulting projects with victim service programs across the state. We did programs in New York City. We were in Cattaraugus County. We were in Franklin County. So really, we went uh, we went out to you all, um, and and we're really enthusiastic about all the victim service programs that we got to work with and meet. Um, we had uh, 400 participants who took part in all these different projects, uh, mostly staff, but we also worked with some board members um, and a, an occasional volunteer, I think, who were maybe part of the bigger trainings. Uh, we worked on 33 customized agency projects. Um, and we're going to give you a few examples of those later in the webinar when we go through the types of programs that we can do with you. Um, but those 33 projects were, 20, were for 20 OVS-funded agencies, uh, which means that there were some agencies that we did more than one project for. Um, but we know that there are way more than 20 OVS-funded agencies out there. So we're really hoping to see a lot more project applications in this go-round. Um, the other thing that we did, and I think we have a slide on it later, is we did do um, five OVS-wide webinars on a variety of topics, and those were, you know, like these webinars that were open to everybody, um, and that was another 500 participants took part in those, and we hope it, we're hoping to repeat those again this year and, and are this, in this cycle, may, uh, so watch out for those in, in the coming months as well. And, this and is now Alan. I'll turn it back. I just wanted, yep. I just wanted okay. to uh, echo what Jenny said, that we really hope uh, more than 20 agencies will apply this time. We look forward to working with a wide range of you, and uh, it's really a pretty simple process, which we'll be getting to in just a minute, but encourage you to all take advantage of it. Um, Jenny and Alan just made a couple of really good points um, about the limited participants we had for 2018. Now, part of that was because it was a pilot program and it wasn't going to last very long, but it was also, um, you know, the outreach that they conducted resulted in some phenomenal responses, and a lot of programs came back and requested multiple training requests, which is allowable, which and you'll find out when we go through the process. So there was a few programs who asked for multiple ones, and there were some that just needed one, and, and they turned out to be su super successful. Again, the 2018 program really only ran for about a half a year, um, and in that year, they we trained quite a few people. Uh, there were 400 custom training or, or training technical assistance request participants, but in addition, there was also some additional webinars that were offered through the program as well. So uh, in, in our eyes, it was quite a success, and, and we're very proud of it, and we're happy based on that success and the evaluation feedback uh, that we received um, to to request and uh, succeed in a competitive procurement for to continue this program. We're very happy that we're, we're rolling it back out again for you guys. So um, I'm going to transition now into the um, eligibility of this. It's pretty simple for anybody that's interested in, in the new program starting in October 1. The only um, uh, sort of, I guess, note or connotation about it is that they te you technically have to be an OVS-funded program, uh, so we consider them victim assistance programs, um, to be able to submit a request. Um, we and the, the eligibility, the initial eligibility eligibility review will determine just you know verify that uh, upon once we receive them upon um, a request if this indeed if you are indeed a VAP or uh, and what this really means is you have to have an an executed and ongoing contract for the 2019-2020 fiscal year and then so forth for the next fiscal years if this program continues. Also, the approvals are 100% contingent on state and federal funding, so that's always a caveat for all of our programs. Even your federal contracts, that's a big deal. If the funding goes away, we can't continue to offer it. So that's just a, a sort of a caveat for you to keep in mind. Um, these are the, in general, types of programs, and I think, Jenny, are you going to touch base a little yeah, more I'm gonna about I'm going to take, this? yeah. Well, I'll take Great. it for now we're, um, so Ellen and I can take the next part. So um, the program is really designed to meet the needs of the victim service agencies that we're serving and the programs that are out there. Um, so we've created a program that um, offers or created a format that offers programs in a number of different formats. So we do traditional classroom training. Uh, we do remote training, which is which is generally online. One-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. There's technical assistance or consulting projects, which uh, might be short but can be much longer-term projects. Um, and then facilitation services for retreats, meetings, and strategic planning. And then finally, uh, there are hybrid programs, which combine two or more of these different formats. And so what we're going to do now is go talk a little bit more about 
what each of these program types entail, and then we're also going to give you a couple of examples of projects that we did in this last cycle so you can get a better sense uh, of what the projects might look like and how diverse they were um, last year. So, Alan, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, Blake, you want to hit the next slide? Sure. Okay, so classroom training is the first uh, area, and uh, it's a traditional in-person, on-site uh, kind of program. Uh, we can do it with uh, any size group you want. Uh, we found that 8 to 25 is kind of ideal because it's enough people to allow for some good interaction, but not so many that people get uh, lost in the crowd. Um, and uh, it can be not just uh, the OBS-funded agency staff. You can invite staff from collateral programs that work with you. Uh, that don't have to be OBS funded as long as you are OBS funded. Um, they range from, we did half day programs up to two full day programs. So depending on what your goals are and the topic, um, we can do two days in a row, we can do two days a week or two apart. And we'll basically work with you to figure out what the best format is, exactly what kind of um, training you want, what the focus should be. Um, we found when we talked to people that you know, they come in with one idea, and as we talk, we sometimes end up adapting that a bit. Um, some of the programs we did last time uh, were training the leadership team of an agency on coaching as an approach to supervision, how to be an effective coach of your staff, and how to use that to motivate and develop your staff. Another one was on um, how to do outreach, how to do effective presentations out in the community. Um, we did one on conflict resolution. We did another one on of problem solving uh, and decision making so that, again, it's pretty wide range. I encourage you to take a look at the catalog and uh, whatever's in there we can offer a program on. And again, it could be for an intact group, just your own staff. It could be just for a leadership group, a smaller subset. It could be for your board members, um, a mix of staff and board, and it could be, as I said, staff from multiple agencies. Next slide. Okay, so remote training is the second one Jenny mentioned, and if you have staff in different locations and it's uh, difficult to get together, sometimes it's very hard to leave the, the building during the day, we can arrange uh, basically a live remote, kind of like this webinar, except instead of having just Jenny, me, and Blake uh, speaking, we have everybody on the, uh, on the remote speaking. Should be a shorter group, smaller group, eight to three to eight people, and uh, and shorter in length, uh, maximum about 90 minutes, two hours tops. Uh, it's hard to uh, stay on the phone or on a computer for, for that long. Um, and it can cover really all the topics that are the same as classroom training. Um, last time around, we did two remote trainings, both were on leadership, both were for teams of three, three of the leaders in the program. And um, in one case, it was near the end, as Blake said, it was a pretty short time span, but near the end, they were in Western New York, and for us to get out there just wasn't feasible. Our calendar was pretty full. Uh, so we did it by phone, and we did three 90-minute sessions spread a week or two apart, and that way they had time to kind of think about and use what they did in between sessions, and, and then we could come back and talk about it at the next session. Um, the second group was pretty much the same. It was three leaders. Here they were. They were more local to us, but they were in three different buildings and it was difficult for them to leave for a sustained period of time. Uh, so they asked them, we, we had a uh, basically a four-way conversation, three of them in three locations and me here. And, uh, and we found they worked very well. So again, for small groups, everybody can participate and it's, a, it's an alternative. Okay, one more, Blake. Yep. The third one is uh, coaching. And uh, this is generally done by phone. Uh, occasionally in person, but um, mostly in phone. And it's um, our coaching approach is a combination of training and uh, teaching as well as consulting and problem solving. So we often have uh, some information to share with you, some ideas about what you're struggling with, and then we also listen to you and help you sort through ways to, uh, to be more effective in the situation. And there's two kinds of coaching. Uh, one is just straight up coaching. You put in a request, we want to coach you. We set up a little contract, what we're going to be talking about, and run it over a number of weeks. Um, the second is that it's a follow up to training, and, and we found that to be very effective uh, last year. Um, 
where uh, we do a one or two day training program, you learn a lot in that time. But then when you go to apply it on a job, it doesn't quite work, you have some questions. But this was one-on-one -on -one coaching for people in the class. Um, and this is only open to the OBS funded agency staff in the class. Um, but we could do some follow-up coaching and help them troubleshoot and refine uh, the learning a little bit. Um, coaching we did last time ran a real gamut, uh, how to work effectively with your board of directors, uh, including the Cibola board and staff and working through different uh, challenges in board recruitment, uh, dealing with difficult staff, building a strong team, dealing with internal conflict, holding staff accountable, setting goals, and then we did uh, one on fund development, how to develop a plan, diversify your funding, and build a stronger donor pipeline. So we can coach on pretty much every topic in the book, in the catalog, and uh, again, it could be a follow-up to a program or it could be coaching on its own. I'll turn it over to Jenny for the next one. Okay. So uh, the next the next uh, format is a little different than training. It's um, it's consulting and technical assistance. And so Alan and I are available to work directly with your staff or with your board leadership on a specific issue or project in your organization. Um, it might be a one or two hour consultation by phone or email, and we're just working with you on maybe your strategic plan document or your evaluation plan. But it also can be a longer project. We can help you design and administer a consumer survey or help you develop an evaluation plan for one of your programs. Um, so really, if, if there's an issue within your organization that you feel like you need help with, um, Al and I have both worked as, a, as um, executive directors for, for nonprofits. We, we both have a lot of experience helping organizations kind of work better um, and work smarter, so we're, we're, we're available to come in and, and help, uh, help you, consult with you, do some technical assistance with you on a variety of topics. Um, so last year, we helped an agency develop a program, their program evaluation plan, um, including helping them develop logic models and outcomes for some of their major programs. Uh, we also helped with the strategic planning process for a victim service program, um, and that included both facilitating a staff planning vision, staff visioning session and um, their staff uh, their strategic planning retreat itself, but then going in and helping the organization develop the plan objectives um, and create the framework for actually implementing the strategic plan. And then in one other project, we helped an agency refine and revise their performance evaluation system. Um, and this was an instance where it might have been something that the agency leader could have done on her own, uh, but with so much other work, she just couldn't get to it. Um, and in and instances like these, we can do some of the actual work to rewrite a form or rewrite questions and help you move the process along. Okay, next slide. So facilitation, uh, we're also able to come in and facilitate on or off-site retreats and planning programs for your program or your agency. Uh, we can help you plan the agenda, we can facilitate the session itself, um, and, and, um, and retreats and sessions like these are usually between a half day and two days. Um, and then we can follow up with any notes or action plans that were developed during the sessions. Um, so in the last project, we facilitated a strategic planning retreat, as I mentioned in the last slide, um, and we also did a, a team building retreat for, for one of the victim service agencies. Uh, but we can also do board development or leadership retreats, um, and, at those, and at those you can tackle important issues, you can maybe refine your board or staff structure, um, or help set yearly goals and objectives. Sometimes it's really useful to have an outside facilitator help you have those conversations and make sure everybody's being heard and helping you really move to consensus and, and make some decisions. It's, it's helpful to have an outside person there. All right, next slide. Um, and, the, and the final format is what we're calling hybrid programs. Um, and sometimes training or coaching or technical assistance by itself um, is not enough. And so in the hybrid programs, uh, we're combining two or more types of training or technical assistance. Um, so maybe uh, you need some technical assistance or coaching before you tackle a classroom training with your full staff, or you might want to give um, to follow a skill training up with individual coaching um, for your participants, as Alan mentioned um, in the coaching slide. Um, so it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a way to kind of uh, have more impact with the project. So by combining both the training and the technical assistance or the coaching, um, 
So last cycle, as Alan mentioned, we did some leadership training followed up by one of the, um, by leadership coaching sessions for participants to help the participants explore ways to implement their new skills and strategies that were taught during this training. Um, we did a technical assistance project where we helped an agency begin to create their fund development plan, but we combined that with some um, related board training about creating a donor pipeline and perfecting an elevator speech. So, you know, we did the technical assistance, but we also trained board members. Um, and finally, uh, we we combined uh, in, in one, more than one project, I think, but in this one I'm going to talk about, we combined multiple trainings into one project. So first, uh, a training for the full agency staff on communication and teamwork, um, and then followed, followed that with a training that was just for the agency leaders um, on how they could support and facilitate the new efforts, the new communication um, and teamwork efforts by their staff. So again, combining um, two or different, two or two more different types of program into one large project. Um, and so as you can see, there are lots of different ways that we can support the work that you do. Um, and, and when we talk to you about the, the project that we're doing, we're really going to tailor it to meet your needs. So make sure that it has all the components that you're looking for um, you know, within, the, within the, the budget of the project. Uh, so now I am going to turn it back over to Blake to explain the application process. I think we're going to have time at the end, right, Blake, for questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and if you guys have them, just a reminder, if you do have questions, um, type them. We'll, we'll try to get to them and queue them up uh, as we go. Um, I just want to reiterate real quick, too, that everything that Jenny and Alan just referenced was 100 percent free to all of the programs that took advantage of those pro of, the, of the services. So I can't stress again how big of a deal this is um, for you and the programs that are that apply in the future. Uh, we do handle it on a first come first serve basis. Uh, there are some exceptions and eligibility things that you know might d deny an application. I'll give you an example about that soon. But in general, all of those services they just referenced are at no cost to our VAPs, and I think that is to me, a huge selling point for you guys. I hope you consider that. And as soon as you have an opportunity, if you have something in mind that would be, you know, fit within um, the guise of the program guidelines, go for it. Take advantage of this program while, while it's still here. So, um, again, thank you. I, you know, I didn't think about this, but we could have possibly even uh, brought in some programs that um, took advantage of the, pro of the training last time, and they would, I'm sure they would share the same sentiment. Um, all right, so I'm going to run you through how does this work. Um, I am transferring to you all a file right now that sort of looks at this. Um, you'll see something pop up on your screen that says file transfer. In a minute, it'll be a PDF that you can download. It's called our submission flowchart. There you go. If you just right-click on that, that'll download for you, and I'll leave the, the window open so it doesn't go away. Um, okay. so. Everything that's on that PDF I'm going to talk about in the slides, so even if you can't download it, don't worry. Um, what we're going to go through is basically how the program works. So on October 1st, we're officially going to launch the pro program, meaning October 1st, an announcement will go out via our listeners, via everybody who signed up to attend this webinar. Um, a couple thousand people will actually get this email at once, announcing the launch of it, and in that will be a link to our submission form. Uh, once I go through this process, I'll actually demo that submission form for you guys as well. But basically, you'll go online, you'll review our catalog of services that are uh, out there and available, and you'll <clears throat> pick what you think would be, uh, or you identify something that you think you could use help with. You go in, submit the submission uh, uh, the submission through a SurveyMonkey, um, sur uh, we're calling it a TARP sur submission form. And essentially, there's a few questions you have to fill out. Again, I'll show you that in a minute. You submit it. That request gets sent to us here at OVS. We review it immediately within a day or two days, two business days, we'll review it for initial eligibility. And there are a couple examples from 2018 where things were missing. It was missing some information or somebody within the organization wasn't authorized to submit it, so they had to then go back and resubmit it, that sort of thing. So there is a one to two day um, review where we're just checking for initial eligibility. After that, we will then refer an eligible uh, initial eligibility approved project to Jenny and Allen, or to our training technical assistance consultants. Then they begin to do what could be a two-week process of 
outreach and customization for a, pro a project proposal. This is where they will begin working with you, most likely over the phone, and they will sort of hash out, hey, this is what you submitted, you're interested in um, helping with the updating a strategic plan for your organization, let's talk about it. You may have one-on-one -on -one phone conversations, you may have multiple phone conversations with them, and then over the course of that a couple of weeks, most likely, you will then, uh, Jenny and Alan will begin to hash out an, a, a formal plan uh, for training and technical assistance. Then from there, they submit that proposal back to um, to you guys. Once you're, uh, you agree that this is the service and training that you need, you'll then approve it and send it up to them. They then send it back to us, and then we do a final eligibility review. And this one's a little more detailed and it takes a little bit longer, so this is where we're going through and determining that uh, everything that's being done is VOCA allowable, um, that it, the authorizations are it's sort of double-checking all of the initial eligibility, but then also reviewing and making sure that all T's are crossed and all I's are dotted before we um, stamp it with a, an approval. Um, after that, if it is approved, we send a letter, an, an award letter announcement um, to the programs, to Jenny, everybody that's involved with it, and you'll get a uh, congratulations. You're going to be working with Jenny or working with Alan or both of them, and uh, here's the title of your project, and a little more details get sent out and then a formal um, uh, letter that goes out to you guys. It's typically sent via email, but it's in a, it's in a PDF, save PDF, just so you're aware. Um, then for whatever training or project you're working on, Jenny and Alan will begin to work with you. And that could be, like they talked about earlier, a long-term project. That could just be a one-time webinar that they're going to schedule for three weeks from now. It could, it could be, you know, whatever is in the guise of your independent uh, and individual, individually and custom design project. So that, you know, those things vary drastically from program to program. And the time frames also vary um, from program uh, from program to program. So it's a hundred. That's what's great about this program is it's completely customizable to the needs of you and your programs. Um, so in general, the first initial eligibility for the program and review and that process can take a couple two to five business days. And then same thing after it's submitted back to us, it takes two to five business days. Right there in the middle, though, where our training partners are working with outreach with you to develop that plan, that can sometimes take longer. We had some projects that took quite a bit of time just because you're playing phone tag or there's something going on or, you know, you're in the middle of it. So it doesn't mean you're not going to not have your program approved or your, your project approved, but it just means that there, you're in the middle of trying to map out what project you're exactly working on. That's the only difference. So um, you can just anticipate on the bookends of the of the submission process, it can take about a week for each each step, uh, maximum time. Sometimes it's quicker, and then in the middle, it can be customized to your responsiveness. And I think Jenny and Alan, I don't know if you have any comments about that, but how has that process been when you in 2018 and during the pilot program was uh, did some things take longer? Was there common things that occurred during the that two weeks of project planning that um, uh, you might have any comments about? Yeah, one thing I want to emphasize, it looks like a lot of days, but it's not a lot of work on your part, um, that you write the initial uh, application, which is pretty straightforward, um, and uh, then it comes to us, we call you, we have a conversation, then we write the next part, so you don't have to write it, we send it to you for review and approval, and it goes in. So mostly the five to ten business days is because you might be busy, we might be busy, you know, we might be on vacation. So we put that in as a cushion. But typically, with good responsiveness on both parties, it was a matter of a couple of days. And um, you know, we would talk to you, and within a day or two, we have the proposal written back to you another day or so, and you review it, and, and off it goes. So these are really outside limits because things happen, but in general, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And one of the reasons we have these conversations and there's this piece in the middle is, um, as we talked about, we really tailor the program, but also sometimes what you think you want, um, you, you, then, and when Blake goes through the, the submission form, you know, we ask you what you know, problem you're hoping to solve and what type of training or, or technical assistance you think you want. Sometimes when we have conversations on the phone and we really kind of dig deep into the outcomes you're hoping to accomplish, uh, we come up with a, a different plan. Maybe you thought you needed a half-day training, but it seems like maybe you need coaching first um, or you need 
technical assistance or the training needs to be longer or shorter or on a different topic. So those conversations are are really important. It's, um, to, so we really understand um, the issues that you're trying to solve and how what we offer can best best address those. All right. Um, to uh, reiterate that as well, the amount of initial work for a um, request for training is very limited. And on the next uh, slide I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually share with you my screen, so bear with me. Um, this might take a second for it to transfer over. All right, so on our training and technical assistance request page, and what I'll do is I'll actually, I'm actually going to navigate there so everyone can kind of see how, how I got to this web page for you. Um, on our, the OVS homepage, our VAPs have a pages for them right there in the middle. Uh, if you didn't see that, sorry, it was guidance for victim service providers. In our VAP training center, this is where we house all of our training efforts, not just the training and technical assistance request program, but all of our training um, uh, information is stored here. If you scroll down, there's actually a page dedicated to the training technical assistance request program. The recordings from um, today's webinar should be posted on our YouTube channel soon as well, so that's just a quick reference for you as well. But on this page, basically what you will do when this is live on October 1st, everything is, will be the same October 1st. The only difference will be this down here, the request submission form will be live. It'll be a live link for you. Um, you'll read the standard operating procedures if you're interested into it. I actually have them open on a, a screen here. It's a, just sort of outlines how the program works, what's the purpose of it, et cetera. Feel free to read that at your leisure. Um, and then you would basically open up our catalog and take a look at, and everything we talked about in the webinars, revisited here, what type of trainings are offered, you know, what they mean, samples of what they look like in the past. And then in the um, uh, third page of it is a table of contents that shows the particular um, programs that were designed and developed for a starting point for you to submit a request. Um, so you may say, I need help with developing a strategic plan. Under that link is more information about what the, our training partners can do or what are some samples that might be, might, what that might look like. And so this is guiding you with a starting point of co topics or training contents that you would be possibly interested in soliciting a request for a technical or training assistance. Um, the, the, there are multiple, I think now, um, there are, yeah, over 39 training options in here. Uh, they're all numbered to make it easier for you. So what you would do, this is really your starting point, uh, your menu, so to speak, of training options or technical assistance options that you're interested in. You review it, you think you have an idea for it, um, you would come back to this page where you would click on the submission form, which isn't live yet, but I'll, I'm going to demo what that would actually look like for you. And this is to reiterate what Alan was um, referencing just a minute ago, is that it's really not that cumbersome. What you what you would do is essentially, let me minimize this, essentially this is uh, the back, uh, I'm in the, as a, an administrator, so you won't see everything on the screen, but this is what the form looks like. You come in, there's on the first page some very basic information. It shows uh, a link to the website again. Uh, it talks about um, the only people, and this is a big caveat, that can submit this request are either program directors or executive directors for those organizations. So. Um, this is what has resulted in some programs getting rejected and then having to resubmit is that somebody else who wasn't authorized has submitted a request. So I want to be very clear about that. You have to be the director of a program, um, uh, a point of contact for that program as a director or an executive director um, on behalf of that program or, or organization. And so here's where that information is crucial. However, just because you're a program director or the executive director, you may not be the person who would be the lead on this project. So what we ask for in this first section is whoever that person is to enter their, the lead demographic information here, understanding too that it could be a one woman or a one man show and you do everything so you would be the lead, the executive director and the program director. That is common with some of our programs, so we, we're aware of that. So you fill out that information, just be, please read, be careful um, uh, of, of all the information that's being asked of you and that it's, it's submitted completely. And then on the next page, this is it. You're going to take, uh, and we even reduced the word count to 175 words, but you're in a nutshell going to explain what do you what you need, why you need the um, uh, tra or the training or the technical assistance request. The pro and, and this is um, verbatim of what Jenny and Alan would like to help you answer is what is the problem you're hoping to solve, 
and what are the expected outcomes for that? What really, what does a successful project look for you? From there, you'll also and, choose. And can I just no, pipe ahead, in yeah. real quick there? So 175 words, which may still seem like a lot, but it, it really gives us a, an opportunity because um, your, I think your grant managers will look at, look at this and yeah. they know your programs, but when it comes to me and to Alan, we don't know your programs as well. Um, so the more information you can give us about um, who you are and um, the type of program you're running and a little bit about your staff, um, as well as the examples about what, you know, some specific examples about what the issues are and how you'd like them to change. So, um, you know, put as much in there as you think will be useful for us in addition to making sure you answer those first two, which is what's the pro pro problem you're hoping to solve and the expected outcomes. So. Yeah, without a doubt, the more the, the better. It just helps uh, process that. Um, Alan, do you have any other comments about that? Do you feel? Yeah, no, it's just for you, what Jenny said, that uh, some people feel like, you know, I can state my problem in 30 words and what's more to say. And, and so the more to say is give us more of a flavor of your agency, how long you've been around, uh, how big is your staff? Uh, you know, what are some uh, overall the kind of programs you serve and the clients you serve, and some of your overall challenges? And then that gives us a context for the specific 30 or 50 word description you have of your problem. But we like the bigger context, and, and obviously the OBS staff don't need to know that information. But this form goes to us after them, and it'll be very helpful to us and makes it easy for you to get your 175 words done. Um, and so, and I mentioned earlier too, we did re in 2018 reject a couple of requests that came in because it just said like two or three words and it just wasn't enough. We need to be able to, you know, justify the reasoning behind it. It's also for our own auditing purposes as well to have, you know, what's the need with it being uh, demanded and, and, and the problem that's trying to be solved. So uh, after that, you'll have a drop down menu here where you can choose the, um, Oh, it's not going to show me in the in the in the in this mode. But basically, it's a drop-down menu of all of the um, numbered uh, training or topic op opportunities here. And in there, you would just choose the corresponding number. Uh, understanding that it might be it might not be one of these as well. And there's an other drop-down menu in here as well. So you would choose that. So there's about 40 options for you to choose from in here. And that again guides them when they do their initial outreach with you guys. So it's um, it's okay if something in the end changes from the original request. But this is important for you to consider. You know we 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 have to stay within the relative scope of the offerings that Jenny and Alan have outlined in our catalog of services. So there's also a link for you to click on the catalog services if you've lost it there as well. Next text about the time frame for completing it. Uh, this is also helpful for them as well. And, and, and as you go in, the, you, again, all of this information is feeding Ginny and Alan to be able to identi better identify the actual need and, and training requests that you're looking for. So you'll have the length uh, or time frame for it, the type of service, the service length, like uh, you know, specific training, is it a half day, full day, et cetera. So again, you're, you're helping identify um, information that can be used in building that official project proposal. Then after that, we also ask that you identify the number of staff expected to receive services. This is really important for us. Um, it may change. You may say, I, I have about seven managers I need to train on something. And then it turns out, well, through your work with JD and Allen, it's going to be a little more. That's okay. They can always update that for us on the back end. But for the purpose of this submission, your best estimate um, for the number of staff expected to receive services is there. You don't have to list out their names or anything like that, but just an, a rough estimate of a number. And then again, the last two things are sort of the authorization of the submission. And this is where your program director or executive director can submit the actual request and their name, email, everything is, is listed here and uh, you are acknowledging that you have uh, read the, the standard operating procedures and understand that you have full authorization to submit it. So this is where we're again asking that it, uh, and mandating that it be a program director or executive director or if you're the same lucky person, you, you get to sign it on behalf of all, both those roles. Uh, however, that is mandatory in that um, what happens if an, a, a project is approved or meets initial eligibility, all of the correspondences related to that approval or rejection are sent to both the executive director and the project lead for this. So everybody's on the same page and aware of what's going on. Um, so you'll hit submit. Um, after that's it, that's the last attestation, um, you hit submit. And a couple of days later, you know, you may get an acknowledgement that it was received, but then uh, you'll start working um, if it passes initial eligibility with Ginny and Alan shortly thereafter. 
Um, I'm going to switch back over to our PowerPoint. So that's that's really it in a nutshell. Um, you'll October 1st, we'll share that link to the sub, for the submission process. Uh, right now, the catalog of services is available. As soon as this webinar is over, you will be redirected to that web page as well, so bookmark that. Um, it'll automatically re redirect you there. Um, if not, you can always just go to the OVS homepage and navigate to our training pages to get to all of that. Uh, but that's sort of the, the your, your initial work in a nutshell. Now, after that, there is some back and forth you'll do with Jenny and Alan, and then you'll you'll be after every, if you have a are lucky and your your proposal has been received and approved, you'll then begin working with them over the course of whatever the length of your project period is. So um, that could be that could be range from a couple weeks to you know a couple months if not more. Um, uh, let's see here. I do have a a quick question. Um, yes. Yeah, so somebody had a question about the time frame in which a, a project can be completed. So in 2018, it was a pilot program, and the funds were only available through September 30th of 2018. So there was a finite time for the project to be completed. However, this project has a longer uh, time frame, meaning we uh, will operate as long as funds are available um, for the next 27 months, hopefully. Uh, if uh, we exhaust funds and the project is super successful in the first few years, it may end sooner, but um, we will monitor that. So if a request comes in and we know funds are drying up for, through the program, we will um, we may put a pause on fun, on program on the that request or that project that's being worked on, um, contingent on you know the availability of funding. So uh, in a nutshell, they can be longer if needed, um, but the program itself uh, could you know the request will be all handled on a first come first serve basis. So. Uh, we would encourage you to submit it just to get it in the queue for processing, even if it means you don't have a project or a training need until March of next year. Submit your request when the program opens so you can kind of get in the queue and, and not be left out. Um, I had another some, question. Some of it will also have to do with scheduling as well. So sure. um, if everybody wants their training in March because it's a downtime, you know, we just have to balance that out as well. Of course. Um, I mentioned this earlier too. I'm not, um, we talked about in 2018 that the program also offered some webinars, and right now um, we may do that again, um, where we, for example, there's some subjects that are on there right now that are actually I think some of them are still available on our web page. Um, this may occur again. <clears throat> it's a, it also may be something that you specifically need for your program, so you could request that. But also, in addition, we offer a variety of other additional webinars. We're, we're, we're working with Jenny Allen on possibly doing another one for some of our newly funded programs. That might come out sooner than later. Um, but I'm just giving you, uh, sharing this with you as well as another part of this program included some additional webinar trainings that were uh, that were done um, in 2018 and may, may again occur as a part of this um, current project. Um, Real quickly, uh, somebody asked uh, the when duties are split between two directors, um, would that person be eligible to complete the, the or request a submission? Uh, it, I, I would say it's always okay to submit, even if we review it and initial eligibility is denied, and we determine that something else um, uh, needs to be. Uh, approved by somebody else within the our organization, we'll catch it and then we'll we'll forward that. Sometimes it might delay the initial request by a few days, but um, it's always better to have submitted something than to not have submitted something at all. Because if if program is really popular on the onset and now you just waited because you were waiting for you know somebody to um, you think who you thought needed to approve it. You know, the other thing you could do too is um, you could actually email uh, your grant program manager or email us at training at ovs.ny.gov. Again, that's training at ovs.ny.gov. A question about eligibility, we'd be happy to pass it up uh, the chain for a review and, and, and get you a quick response um, if you're really on the fence about that. Um, so I mentioned Jenny from J Strategies and Alan from Krieger Solutions. Um, I'm also going to right now transfer with you guys all a copy of their the biography so you can read a little more about them. You heard about them a lot or you heard from them a lot today on that uh, file transfer here. I'll do it again one more time in case it didn't pop up on your screen. It's 
get it's pulling up right now on your screen you'll see a file transfer form and in just a second a couple PDFs will pop up where you can review this all of this information is also available on on uh, our website um, there you go there's the consultant bi biography so you can see more about Jenny and Allen um, I, I I cannot stress enough about how much of a positive um, feedback and a positive reaction we've received from our VAPs who took advantage of this program in 2018 and how much uh, of a positive feedback in general Ginny and Alan themselves have had. Um, uh, they have been a tremendous uh, team to work with and in our end we have had nothing but um, great feedback internally as well about how great of a, of a partnership this has become. So I'm, I, I am really excited to get this program relaunched. Um, you know, stay tuned. More is coming up about it in 20. You know, uh, in the at the end of the month, announcements will go out. You attended the webinar; that was your first step. But we will definitely send more as it keeps coming um, and and keep promoting it. Uh, but take advantage of this. You can get to know Jenny and Alan, um, and then myself and Rachel Gentili are also here to help um, during the administration of the project and as well. So that that's that's uh, us in a nutshell. Jenny, Alan, do you have any um, uh, other information you want to share? Or talk a little more about yourself. Well. I think uh, one of the things that Blaine mentioned at the very beginning is that um, we may do some outreach, so you may get an email from me and Alan um, sometime over the next few weeks just following up, seeing if you had questions, if you want to set up a time to talk about it. Um, we found that that was really useful for um, the VAPs last year that um, had showed in shown interest is even before you put in a proposal to get a sense of it, if, you know the type of thing that you might be interested in and um, whether it would work for you. So we will send those emails out probably in the next week or so, um, and are happy to set up a time to talk um, and kind of explore things with you. Yeah. So basically, we could do a pre-application conversation if you're not sure what you want and you looked at the catalog and there's three or four things. You know, we're happy to have a short conversation, help you get that first application in, and then when we follow up, there'll be a shorter call because we've already had some of the work done. I have one uh, quick question. Um, can staff from other funded programs uh, participate in this? And um, it's possible. The the program eligibility means that the, per, the program submitting the request has to be an OVS funded program. However, we understand and I, in 2016, I think it was, there were some vocal rule changes that uh, made it a possibility for non full time equivalent uh, funded staff to also attend trainings. But by and large, during the eligibility review, if it's just for something that's separate and apart from the the um, larger scope of what you've been funded to do by OVS, it may get rejected, but if somebody happens to work for the same program or is involved with the same services that are being offered through um, uh, the guise of your contract with OVS, then then we it would absolutely be considered for an eligible training. Um, and I think that's it. I don't see any other questions in the chat. If um, if you guys have more, feel free to email us them at training at ovs.ny.gov. We're happy to answer them. Stay tuned. More emails are coming out um, about the launch of the program. And because you participated in this today as well, you'll also get some follow-up, as I mentioned, directly from uh, Jenny and Alan. So that's it. I, I want to thank everyone for participating today. Uh, the recording for the webinar got interrupted, but I, I was able to catch it again. So it might take us a little while to get it cleaned up and, and published. Um, but we, it, at the worst case, uh, if there's issues with it, we'll still send out PowerPoint slides um, and information about it. So again, everyone, thank you for attending today. Jenny, Allen, thank you so much for joining us. I hope uh, this was any other last parting words from you guys. No, we are looking forward to all of the uh, program submission forms uh, coming in um, and look forward to meeting, getting to know even more of the victim assistance programs this year because it has been really fun to get to know the program and the impactful work that everybody's doing. All right. Well, on behalf Thank of Thank you, everyone. We, yes, Rachel. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rachel will be a big help with us when it comes to uh, processing this as well. So you'll get to know all of us hopefully over the course of the next few months. But, th you know, thanks for attending today's webinar. And stay tuned for emails and get your requests in because, again, it's a free service to all of you guys. So we're excited to relaunch this. So everyone have a wonderful day and take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.